Let's begin by taking a look at the Word of God. And I want to share a few verses to open our worship service this morning reading from the book of Ephesians. As we think about the situation the world is in and the nation with all the rioting and all the confusion and, and things that we are having to, to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, it seems like it just continues to get worse instead of better. But as always, we can depend on God's Word to give us the guidance that we need if we try to live our lives every day. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 through 17, listen to what God's Word says. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. <clears throat> Having abolished us in his flesh and the enemy, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for making himself to twain one new, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both of them die in one body by the cross, having been slain in into me thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were before off and to them that were now. But grace, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and worship today. God, we thank you for the wonderful gift of prayer, the power of prayer. And Lord, I just pray this morning for our nation, our country, that we that people in, in, in our country and in our nation begin to realize, oh God, that the only solution to all the problems we're having to deal with every day is turning back to you. So as your scripture just said, Lord, we, we can continue to think about and pray for peace. I just pray God will lift it up, lift it all up to you, and learn that we need to completely put our faith, hope, and trust in you. Now as we continue in this worship service, I pray that you lead us and guide us, leave Brother Carrie up as he shares your word this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A way of announcements, we don't have a whole lot this morning about way of announcements, but we will meet tonight in Bible study at 6 30. Also again Wednesday night at 6 30. So we'd like to encourage you to come and be a part of that. We're having a great time in our Bible studies. If you're not regularly attending those, I would encourage you to do so. It's just a good informal time that we we'll all sit around and, and share ideas and, and you know, what God's word means to us. And, we learn something just about every week. So I'd like to encourage you to come and participate and be a part of that. You know, now to me, oh, we have Sunday school too, by the way. <laughs> and you know, the time hasn't changed. It's 10 o'clock every Sunday morning. <coughs> so if that's not on your calendar, put it on there. <laughs>
you for the tithes and offerings that's been given here this morning. I pray, Lord, you take these tithes and offerings and we use them for the building and betterment of your kingdom. As always, God, I pray for those that are able to give and those that are unable to give. And God, I just pray for our church that we'll seek the knowledge and the wisdom and the guidance we need, Lord, to use these as, as you would have us use. We thank you and we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. sad about some things. 
And that's kind of what we're going to look at a little bit. And I'm going to ask you just to stand just for a moment. I'm going to have a word of prayer because we're going to do this a little different uh, than we usually do. We usually read the scriptures and go through. But we're going to do that a little bit different today. We're going to have prayer. That's God to help us get through today. Surely God has a word for us, if not all of us, but one or two of us, right? So I pray that you'll hear the, uh, uh, Jesus speak to you today through the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, to find his word that he's giving us today to do. And where your walk is with Jesus is very important. And uh, uh, so listen as we uh, pray. You listen for the Lord to speak to you uh, throughout this uh, service. Father, we just want to pause and thank you for this day. We thank you already for being here at Emmanuel Baptist Church this morning in this building. Uh, we realize that we the people are the church. We realize that, that we're the body uh, of Christ. We're uh, serving you uh, here at, at Emmanuel Baptist uh, Congregation. So help us to be aware of your presence as you're with us. Help us to hear a word from you, then apply it to our hearts, apply it to our lives, that we might serve you and honor you. And we just thank you. For what you've done and what you're going to do in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Maybe seated. Kind of got an introduction to this. Uh, what's going? What's taking place? Uh, if you can use your spiritual imagination this morning and uh, and think about maybe looking at a play, and what's happening, a scene uh, that what's happening uh, that's taking place. Uh, Jesus has uh, uh, been. Crucified, he's been put in a grave. It's the third day he's come out. Uh, it's on uh, Sunday morning. It'd be like what we would call the first day of the week. That's why we gather on the first day of the week to honor uh, that. And the disciples started meeting uh, after uh, Pentecost on the first day of the week. They would meet also. So we kind of uh, inherited that and knew that. Uh, the women had come to the tomb. Uh, and they've not caught it yet. Now listen to this. The disciples and the followers of Jesus have not caught that he said he was coming out of the grave. They have not caught it yet. I mean, he's told them, he, he's told them and told them and told them that it's going to happen and that it must happen. It's going to, it has to happen. And they've not caught it. They get to the tomb, the women are there, the stones rolled away. Uh, they go in, there's two angels, uh, two men, Tell them, uh, hey, you know, why, why are you seeking the living among the dead? He, he's not here, he's risen as he's dead. And uh, so they go back to the disciples, the disciples don't believe it. John and Simon Peter, they take off towards the, 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 the grave as fast as they can go. Uh, they get there and look in, they see the clothes all folded up and everything. The Bible says it's. Simon Peter left there wondering about these things, just wondering about it. Uh, the Bible says in the book of John that, that John, he believed immediately that, uh, and that you look that up in the last part of the book of John, that he, he, he believed. Um, the women's report seemed as idle tales. You ever had to tell somebody something and they not believe it? You see, we give up too easy. We, we tell people that Jesus is the way, that Jesus can deliver people from their uh, addictions or whatever's in, in their problem and help them get through the problems, whatever they're going through. People don't believe us. They don't, they don't believe that. And, and, and sometimes they don't believe it is because we don't live as though God's helping us. We're going to talk about that and look at how important that is about how your lifestyle is and how your walk with Jesus is. So, how is your walk with Jesus? That's the question that you're going to have to answer today, that you're going to have to deal with today. You're also going to have to answer the question, what does Jesus mean to you? Now, that's a very important question. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't get that right, whatever else you do uh, is, is not going to be very important. Uh, it ought to be why you come to church, why you're doing it. all these things because you love the Lord, because you're trying to do what God had you to do, and you really love Jesus. You fell in love with Jesus. Really. What is it? Then how do we show our love for Jesus to others? 
going to talk about that, look at that just a little bit. And those are the questions that you're going to have to ask. Because Jesus is going to ask these uh, disciples, these two uh, people who are traveling uh, back from Jerusalem, going to the mess, uh, he's going to ask them some questions. So you follow with me on it and start in verse 13 of chapter uh, 24 of Luke. Listen what the Bible says on this. It says, And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. About seven miles uh, is where uh, it's from. On it. And it's about, we're going to find out they had a sad walk. Now this trip that they've taken, and remember what's happening, that it's on the first day of the week, it's on the third day that Jesus has been uh, crucified. He's come out of the grave. They get a report. They Now they leave Jerusalem. We're going to walk seven miles uh, to get away. It's what they're doing. And it's a sad walk because they've not come up yet to what, realize the whole story and what Jesus has been trying to teach them. <clears throat> I will tell you something. I know a lot of sad Christians. And let me tell you something, it's sad to be a sad Christian. <laughs> it's just sad to be a sad Christian. Because you know what? We're saying to the world, world, we don't really believe that Jesus can help us. We don't really understand, we don't really, we don't, we don't believe the truth. That's what we're saying. That's our testimony to, to the world. And here's two men who are walking. They're, they're, Going, they're living seven miles now. They're going to do that. Uh, and in verse 14 says, And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Now what happened was, is while they're traveling and talking, they're talking about how that Jesus was killed. And their hope was gone. Now here's how they understood it. They understood that Jesus was the Messiah and he was going to uh, re, uh, redeem or bring out Israel and restore Israel. That was their hope. That was what they were looking for. That was what the Messiah was supposed to do. And they were trying to look for that. And now they're walking and, 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 you, and Jesus comes up to them and they don't even know it yet. They don't realize it. How many times in your life and my life have we allowed Jesus to walk with us and we not pay attention to him? We don't even realize he's there. We, we're, we're so occupied with the problems and trials and troubles in our life that we forget that Jesus is with us. Amen. That we forget that. And so here's what happens. That they, that they don't know it. That they're reason to give him. I've got all these things about Jesus right now. In verse 16, but their eyes were hidden that they should not know him. Now, for some reason, I'm not exactly clear on why that God would hide this song. But I think why he did that is that he didn't want them to be over rejoicing until they learned a lesson. And you have to understand that some things that God allows to happen to you and to me to help us to learn something, to grow a little bit, to really step out and do it. So, for some reason here, God hid their eyes that they could not recognize Jesus at first. Okay? Even though he'd been walking with them, they, they just couldn't do it. Now, uh, in verse 16, it says, But their eyes were hidden that they should not know him. And then in verse 17, listen. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad. He what is it? See, Jesus is going to teach these two disciples, these two guys, um, Cleopas. We don't know the other the name of the other, but we know the name of one of them. It's told us who it is. And they're they're walking and discussing. They have left Jerusalem. They've left the other disciples. That was probably up in the upper room. Is probably where they went then. Uh, and they heard that, that Jesus, <clears throat> they heard that the tomb was empty. Some of them believed, uh, 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 didn't believe in the women. Some of them kind of did. John, we know it. The Bible says that he did believe after he gets out to the, uh, the, 
the grave to the tomb. And in John chapter, I think, 21 or something like that, it's our 20, that he does that, that he believes that. Uh, he said that he does. And then uh, the, they're wondering what happened because their hope had been gone. Their hope had been gone, been gone all the way through this. So Jesus asked him the question, well, why are you sad for? What, what, you know, you're walking and why are you sad? Uh, it's a sad, they were sad for the things that have happened. We know that from verses 18 through 24. Listen to what the Bible says. And the one of them, whose name was Phelps, answered, said unto him, Are there only a stranger in Jerusalem, and have not known the things which have come to pass uh, there in these days? He said, Man, hey, where have you been? You've not heard what's happened in Jerusalem? Are you some kind of stranger or something? Uh, see, whatever happens in your life and my life, we got to know for sure that Jesus can help us. He, Jesus is going to teach these two guys a real good lesson that they're going to share out to the rest of the world and to me and you today. In verse 19, the Bible, listen to what the Bible says. He said unto them, What things? Now see, they're sad over the things that happened in Jerusalem. And Jesus said to them, What things? Just tell me. What, what are and they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed and word before God and all the people and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him but we trust in that here's what the problem is here, here's, here's the whole problem verse 21 tells you why they were sad see no one would have said that Jesus was killed that happened but here's why they were sad really but we trusted that it had been he which should have to redeem Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. Now you see, there are some things that happened. And they said, listen, we, you, don't know, you don't know what, what happened? Jesus, what things? Well, let me tell you. Jesus, who was supposed to be the Messiah, who we trusted to be the Messiah, has basically, and, and he's been killed by the, the chief priests and the, the Romans and all those, they delivered him up there to be killed. And he, we were trusting that he would be the man who would redeem us. That word redeems means to com purchase completely, to really get a hold of it, to own to have the authority over and so what happened was is that they were sad over those things. But they had missed the whole things of the teaching of Jesus and they just went back to Luke chapter 9. He would have, they didn't remember that, what was said to them. If they'd been to Mark chapter 8, they understood those things on it. All those things that what Jesus said that he, he prepared them and told them, listen, I'm going to die. They're going to deliver me up. I'm going to be crucified. I, it's going to happen. But I'm coming out of the grave on the third day. He even tells them one time, he said, listen, you tire this temple down three days, I'm going to raise it back up. They thought he was talking about a temple made of stone and wood. He was talking about his own life. They, they were sad for not knowing the truth, not understanding the truth. And it, and the, it was all the same. Can you imagine how that... And you ever wonder why Jesus had to spend 40 more days after he was uh, come out of the grave on this earth? He had to spend 40 more days to teach the disciples the very basic things that he'd been trying to teach them while he was alive or before they crucified him. Now he's back, here he is, walking the earth after he had been uh, crucified. He'd come out of the grave. And that's, and that's very important for us to understand uh, that that's a true fact. You can tell people that today, they won't believe. They won't believe that Jesus come out of the grave. They won't believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. What a prophecy. You see, that was foretold on. And verse 23 says, And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen vision of angels which said that he is alive. 
and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the woman had said but him they saw not you see what happened was is that they he said well, listen we got this report that the tomb was empty from these women which we didn't believe it sounded like an idle tale to God to our disciples go and see if they came back and tell us the same thing and, and they're confused they're not, not honoring and not believing all the things that Jesus said. That you ever heard it said in the Bible, he that had an ear to hear, let him hear. That's talking about spiritual hearing. You got to have a spiritual ear to hear spiritual things. See, that's see, don't be surprised when the lost world don't understand us as Christians, that they don't believe us as Christians. Don't, don't be surprised at that. Because you know what? They can't understand that. It, God has to open up their eyes on it. The Bible says that Satan has blinded their eyes to keep them from the truth. Jesus has done this. God has done this so they would see it so they can learn the truth and grasp the truth and get a hold of it and have it the rest of their life on it. Because it's very important for them what's going to happen in this whole story, in this whole scene that's taking place. Because they're getting ready to learn about the, the hard truth here. And let me tell you something. The tr hard truth is hard. But you, you have to know and get the hold of the hard truth. Listen what the hard truth was. Listen how Jesus is going to lay this out to them about the hard truth. Now, catch this, dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. If you are not living like God wants you to live as a Christian, you need to hear some hard truth. You need to catch it and it needs to sink in and you need tough love. Give it to you. Jesus is going to give this to these disciples. going to give it to these two men. In verse 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. <laughs> That's a rebuke, folks. I mean, he's, Jesus is rebuking because, see, here's what they have not. They've not really caught the whole truth. Jesus is now going to wake them up to reality. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody said that to me, that would, that would cause me to, wait a minute. What's this guy doing to me? What was he doing? What's he saying to me? See, used to, when we would preach the gospel, people would say, Preacher, you stepped on our toes today. Now, I will say something about that. I don't aim for your toes. I may hit you on the toe because I'm, I'm not a very good shot at things. But I'm aiming dead straight at your heart. And that's exactly what Jesus was aiming at these two guys. He wasn't trying to really hurt them. He was trying to reach deep down into their heart to catch them to understand the really hard truth about what it was. And you can understand this a little bit. If you think about the prophecies that made, was made of Jesus, that he was going to die. It's, all, it's given in the Bible that he, that he is going to die. In Genesis chapter 3, all the way to, Mal, to uh, uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Chapter, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 20, I mean verse 315. Malachi, the light, and go all the way to the end of the Old Testament. And there in, in chapter 3, verse 1, that he was going to come. That it was going to happen. That he was going to do. Imagine that this kind of thing. Uh, that, that he was going to be the king going to come and, and, and take on the, the kingdom of David, be head of the kingdom of David. That he's going to have a kingdom on earth. That wasn't too hard of a prophecy to, to take hold of. But that he's going to be. Born of a virgin. Can you imagine how tough of a prophecy that was to believe? But it was a true prophecy that came to pass. Where his birth was. What was going to happen? How he was going to take all the prophecies that was given. And he said, man, y'all don't even believe them. You don't trust them. All the things that Jesus has said to us, do we trust that on it? He said, he said you're slow of heart. To believe all that the prophets had spoken. And he said, listen, had not Christ done this? Didn't he supposed to do this? Didn't he supposed to die on the cross on 
That's the hard truth of it that he had. Now their sadness is going to be turned to joy. Now let's look at something. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the, the, the scriptures, uh, the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh to the village, whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone a little farther. He said, listen, I, I'm going up. They said, no. Here's what they said. But they constrained him, and, uh, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards the evening, and the day is far spent. And he went uh, into tarry with, with them. Listen, what, here's what happened. They're walking along. They're sad. Jesus has been with them a little bit. And all of a sudden, Jesus asks them the question, What are y'all talking about? Tells, tells him all the things that had happened about Jerusalem, about Jesus being crucified, and this is the third day now, how that the tomb was empty, and, and they, you know, they didn't believe the report, and it sounded like an idle tale to them. The Bible says it sounded like an idle tale to them. You can say something about Jesus, and people think it's an idle tale. But guess what? Just keep telling them. Just keep on, and because see what? We better believe it, or if, they, if you tell something you don't believe it, why should a lost person believe it? If we as Christians don't. If we don't believe it. And we're not standing up. What kind of word, what kind of belief is that? We as Christians uh, often do that. Often really be excited about it. Don't, don't claim to be a Christian and never hardly come to the church or never hardly serve God or do anything. I've had people say, well, preacher, I can serve God and, and without coming to church. No, you can't. Unless you're so sick, you can't. There's reasons that you can't get to church. That'd be like saying, I love my wife, but I don't, I don't, want, I don't have nothing to do with it. I don't. See, here's how you serve God. You serve God through a local body, through a local congregation. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about people who are listening at home and, and on YouTube and whatever. God. You're not going to serve God sitting on your blessed assurance at home. You have to serve God in serving God through the congregation. That's how we do it. I don't give to this church. I don't serve for this church. I serve through this church. I serve God by serving in this church and through this church. I give to God by giving to our offering and tithes that we give. And that's I'm giving to God. I'm doing it through Emmanuel Baptist Church. There's, listen, you know what a lone sheep is? A sheep by itself. Wolf bait. That's what you are. If you're living outside the, uh, the Christian community fellowship, you're nothing but wolf bait. That's all. You're just waiting for a wolf to get a hold of you. That's what's going to take place. So. Now, Look in uh, 33, verse 33. Because right before that, Jesus did, did something. But I'm going to skip down 33, then we're going to go back up, okay? And they arose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them. Now, there was something that happened that caused these guys to raise up. I want you to back up with me in verse just a minute or two. In verse 30. And it came to pass as he sat at me with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Now, they had seen him do this before. They had watched him do this before. Take the bread and bless it and, and then break it and pass it out. They understood that thing. Then in verse 31, and their eyes were open and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. That's a strange thing for Jesus to do, to vanish out of their, out of their sight, just to get, to get away. But that's what he did. In verse 32, here's what happened. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And why he opened up the scriptures. You see, there was a conviction or something that came over them 
that their heart was burning because of it. See, they were sad on it. Here's a stranger telling them, what, what do you say? Don't you believe the prophets? And then he says, you're a, a fool and slow to heart. Why don't you believe the prophets? And, and their hearts are changed. And their hearts are burnt. It's uh, burning in them. And there's a change upon their life that's beginning to happen on it. More than they've ever had. And they didn't understand it until that happened. Until they recognized who was speaking to them was Jesus. You can hear every preacher you want to hear. But let me tell you something. That's not what you need to hear. You need to hear what Jesus is saying to you. You can listen to every Sunday school teacher you want to listen to. And that's pretty good. But you've got to listen to what Jesus is going to say in there. You can talk to every Christian brother and sister you know. But unless Jesus is speaking to you, unless you're hearing what Jesus is saying or about Jesus, you're missing it next to what anybody else says. You see, if you're just hearing the preacher here this morning, you're missing the whole point, the whole idea of what we happened on. Because here's what happened. Here's what those disciples found out about. After, Jesus, after they recognized Jesus, Jesus just disappears. Now, someone asked me that, and this is just what I believe, okay? Uh, I believe that's the first time that he went back. To, to, he went, went to glory. Then he comes back. Because before that, they can't touch him. Okay? He has to descend him. But anyway, here's what, here's what happened. He did, he, and they get up, and they, they're not sad that he disappeared. They're not sad that he's gone now. They catch it. They understand. They were sad first because he was gone in the grave, and all of a sudden they, you know, oh, man, we don't, we don't know he's the one supposed to do it. They, when they finally recognize that Jesus is alive, and it makes no difference if he's there or not. They know that he's there. They know that, he, that, that he's with them now. Their whole life has changed. You think about that, what would happen to we as Christians if we would realize that Jesus is with us through the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I don't need a picture. I don't need him having to walk with me. I know that he's there. I don't need to have to see him on it because you know what? I know that he's there. I know that he's there in time of trouble. I know he's there in time of help. I know he can get me through things if he so chooses to do it. Or he may want me to go through them so I might grow. So I can rejoice in it. Now, now I know what it is to live free and live a Christian life and have this thing because whatever comes, I don't have to be sad about it because Jesus is with me. So here's what you need to do. There's some things. How do we show our, our love for Jesus to others? Listen, first of all, it's what they did. They, they got up. They got up from that table and started and, and got on by and started doing something. Listen, if you're going to serve God, you've got to get up out of yourself. You got to get up out of that. Oh Lord of mercy, I'm not going to make it. That old oh, no, I never, you know, all the You got to get out of that. Rise up out of that. And you're going to have to live. Okay, listen, Jesus is going to help me get through this. And if He don't, guess what? He wants me to grow. Or something in it that He's doing. But whatever it is, I'm trusting the Lord to get me through with it. I want to believe all His word that He said He'd be with me and He'd never forsake me. I want to believe that. I want to have that in my life. I want other people. I want my children. I want my children to believe that. I want my. I want my grandchildren to believe that. I want them to see me go through problems and trials. I want them to understand how a Christian faces a problem and a trial. I, I want them to see see me to go through things, sickness and everything else. I want them to see me go through that because you know what? I'm trusting the Lord to get through it. Years ago, I have uh, ten times the iron that you're supposed to have. It's going to kill me, they said. You know, I've had a lot of things going to kill me. You know, I guess it'd get killed if I got, if I drowned, wouldn't it? I mean, just whatever. <laughs> I mean, something's going to kill somebody. This is basic. And they told me, they said, they said you know, you got about five years. That's years and years ago. I'm sitting there and the doctor's talking to me and Susie's sitting there beside of me and we're sitting there just kind of looking at the doctor and not saying anything. And, and the doctor said to Susie, says, Miss Robbins, you don't seem too anxious about this. And she said, well, he said, there's really nothing that can do, be done about it. There, there's some treatments, but it cannot be cured. So, you know, and said, so, well, Miss Robbins, I said, look, I'm going to the Lord. If, if 
he wants to take me, that's fine. If I just got five years, that's okay with me. I don't you know when we're going to do that. And I can see the look on his face. I have never worried one day about that. Because you know what? I belong to God. Whatever he wants to do with me, that's fine. I can't do nothing about it. So you know what I want to do? I'm just going to try to live every day like, you know, okay, Lord, okay, and go on. And if we would just, and see, until you face that, until it happens on you, you'll never understand what it is that will get free in Jesus Christ. So rise up out of that. The Lord is alive indeed. If you want to show people how, how the love of God, first you rise up out of your own problems and, and live like Jesus is alive indeed. Then, you know, there's no use to try to talk to a lost person about Jesus if, if he don't think that you believe that Jesus is alive. If you don't believe it, and he don't, and if he don't think that you believe, why, why don't we do it? And then tell what great things the Lord has done. See, here's what lost people are waiting there. They're not waiting to hear what happened in, in Emmanuel Baptist Church 20 years ago. Well, they forgot that. That's gone. They don't know what's happening right now at Emmanuel Baptist congregation. They want to know how God is moving now on us. They, they, they want to know what God's doing in my life now. So I, I just tell them. Some days I, I, I won't tell you something. Some days I'm physically beat. I can't, I don't function well. I go and get to bed and shut the door. I, I'm not feeling, I'm just not feeling good. I don't have the energy. But you know what? I'm just saying, okay, I got to get up. Susie, Susie says it like kids. Got to man up now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just love her? <laughs> man up now. And you know what? I kind of do it and, and get around with it. And I tell people, you know, so how you feel? But I'm not feeling good. I'm not feeling good. I can't, I, my energy's gone. I'm dizzy. I'm, I'm, you know. But you know, I'm just trust the Lord to get me through this thing. He is. He's going to help me. And, and I go on. I don't try to hide it. I don't try to hide it from my grandchildren that I'm sick. I don't try to hide it from nobody. I want people to see that when I'm sick, I'm still trusting the Lord to get me through. I'm still depending upon Him. These two disciples' lives were changed. Because God said, I, you know, if, if they were to recognize Jesus, they'd be so excited they wouldn't get to hear the hard truth about what I tell them. So I'm, I'm going to hide their eyes so they won't recognize Jesus at first. Because I want them to hear the hard truth. I want them to understand what the prophets had said is true. I want them to understand what Jesus is going to say to them is true. So, they don't get sick. Because once they recognize it, they, they're so happy about things, they would have missed the truth. They would not have heard the truth. But now they heard it, and they understood it, and man, they get up and they head back to Jerusalem and they tell the disciples what great things. It's the, how that Jesus had appeared. He's alive indeed. Because He's appeared to We see Him. But you know what time they get there, Jesus has already been, uh, revealed himself to some other disciples. And they said, we know. And they have great joy. They go out and they start, and they go in the temple every day rejoicing. Blossom. They go in there rejoicing. Can you imagine? See, no wonder that early church turned the world upside down. They knew and believed without shadow doubt that Jesus was alive. Never head back, never I shut just a moment. Father, we just thank you for this day, for the blessings of life and what you mean to us. 
as we get a time of invitation or a commitment for people to come and pray or whatever it is, I pray this will be the day that they do that. Maybe there's someone here that needs to make a decision about their salvation. They realize that they're not saved. You've shown them that, that, that Jesus really is alive, that he died for their sins, that he was buried and come out of the grave for their sins, for their justification, to redeem us. They'll come and accept that and believe in that. Maybe there's a Christian who rational with something that's hindering him from being all that God would have him to be. I pray this will be the day that they turn it over to you. And I pray in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Thank you.